Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Horst Zerb. How are you today? I'm great. How about yourself? I am absolutely fascinated by your background. I read that you hold over 40 patents in drug delivery related fields. You've published numerous scientific papers. But for some reason, you've decided to start a publicly listed company in 2003 called Intelgenix. Tell us why. Well, I simply saw an opportunity uh, for myself as a uh, research scientist in the pharmaceutical field to get engaged in the uh, area of oral drug delivery, which has been my background for many, many years. And uh, when I saw that opportunity, I just grabbed it, if you will. It was really as simple as that. Well, it doesn't sound simple to me, especially with all these scientific research pa papers, specifically on this oral film drug delivery. And I read that you are the gentleman who came up with the Listerine oral films. Is that correct? Well, I am the co-inventor of the Listerine technology. And uh, I've since been involved, uh, actually even before I started Intergenics, uh, in many of those uh, oral film uh, development programs. And can you tell me why oral films? Why not, you know, everybody's putting uh, vit uh, gummy bears or, or lotions. So why oral films? What are the benefits? What are the real advantages of this? It's a very good question. Uh, oral films have a number of advantages. As um, scientists that are active in drug delivery, we mostly want to improve the appearance of a drug in the bloodstream. So in other words, um, in our language, we want to improve the bioavailability of a drug. And secondly, but uh, equally importantly, we want to provide uh, tangible therapeutic benefits to a patient and the combination of those two then led to the uh, development of oral films as a delivery platform. One of uh, some of these uh, benefits besides improvement of bioavailability would be that you would be able for example to replace an injectable uh, with a with, with an oral product, nobody likes the needle, and uh, you know, practically everybody would prefer an oral product over a needle. Uh, there are special needs patient populations, like small children or elderly people, who have problems swallowing uh, tablets. For those uh, patient populations, the film would be an event, and there are few other of of these advantages that come with the film delivery system. Well, I can tell you, I am certainly one, one of many that does not enjoy a needle. So can you tell me about this drug repurposing, though? Intelgenics really has a commitment to drug repurpose, repurposing, and I, I did a little bit of research on this. Can you just give us kind of a 10-story a, a view from uh, what you're trying to do? Yeah, repurposing is an area that we have been focusing on for um, quite some time now, and it sort of um, determines our uh, strategic focus for the foreseeable future. Essentially what you do in drug repurposing is you take uh, an FDA approved uh, drug, uh, a drug that is approved for some indication, and um, then in the case that, uh, or in a situation that um, research finds out that the, that the drug might be beneficial for a different indication, you then uh, put in the work required to qualify uh, the drug in the eyes of FDA for this new indication. To give you an example, uh, we're right now working on a product that has been for many, many years approved for the treatment of asthma. We found, or a researcher that we are cooperating with uh, very closely uh, found that uh, this drug might be very beneficial uh, in the treatment of um, certain cognitive disorders, Alzheimer's in, in its strongest form. 
the mild cognitive impairment, things like that. And practically every person over 55, 60 suffers from some form of uh, cognitive impairment. And currently there is no treatment available to really uh, treat this disease that or situation that affects so many elderly people. Um, that is really what drug repurposing does. You take an, an approved drug and um, uh, and qualify it for a new uh, indication. The advantage of doing that is that you do not have to provide to provide uh, all the safety data that FDA requires for a completely new chemical entity because that has already been done. Uh, in the course of um, uh, qualifying that drug for its initial uh, indication. So all these rats and mice uh, uh, tests that take many years and that go into the qualification of a completely new chemical entity, you don't have to do that for a, uh, uh, in a drug repurposing situation. So uh, help me understand, if because this really touches my heart. I think all of us have been directly affected by um, elders in our family with Alzheimer's and dementia. And you're, you're stating that the repurposing of some of these drugs may actually be used to maybe reduce the speed in which they inflict patients. Is that correct? Um, not only that, there is evidence however, not yet in, in humans, uh, so far only in, in animal models, that uh, suggest that this molecule might actually rejuvenate the brain. Okay, well, I'm definitely interested in hearing more about rejuvenating the brain, specifically these uh, Montelukast. Can you tell me why Montelukast? Montelukast is that drug that I was just describing. Montelukast has been uh, used for decades uh, by patients for the treatment of, uh, of asthma. And uh, research, researchers have now found that uh, the drug has the potential to rejuvenate the brain. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Zerb. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.